Uh, good evening, friends uh, and respected senior members of INS. It is my privilege and honor to welcome you all to today's webinar, which is 24th in this series. The webinar committee again brings here in another interesting topic to the knowledge of our members. As you're aware, in the last two webinars, we heard experts talk on the need for protecting intellectual property of our esteemed work in R&D and in the front-end areas and topics of commercial exploitation. And then we heard on the evolution of industry from 18th to 21st century and the concept of industry 3.0 to industry 5.0. Of this, industry 5.0 is the most recent as recent as one year ago, wherein the emphasis is on personalization of industrial product and its delivery. Today, we will hear from our industry, our own DA industry, which is making outstanding progress and has earned a reward of most sought out societal appeal. Yes, I am talking about our own industry, BRIC, Board of Radiation and Isotope Technologies. In terms of personalization of products, BRIT has made phenomenal progress, though miles are yet to be covered. Today we have with us Sri Pradeep Mukherjee, Chief Executive of BRIT, who is going to talk on role of BRIT in production and distribution of radioisotopes based products and technologies, a success story. We all know it is a success story. So on behalf of INS and on behalf of webinar committee, I welcome you, sir, to our webinar uh, and on the Zoom platform. We are indeed lucky to have you today as my two previous attempts got uh, uh, did not get him. I was not successful in getting him. The post that he is managing keeps him busy in service of the nation. So as you all know, BRIT is an independent unit of DA. It is mandated to provide products and services based on radiation and isotope for application in healthcare agriculture, research, and industry. I believe many products bear ISO number and available with price tag. Major products are from radio pharmaceuticals, radiation technology equipments, and sealed sources. It has also offers numbers of number of services. Sri Pradeep is going to talk to us more on all these about the success story of it. So before I welcome uh, our today's speaker, I request Sri S.K. Mehta, our President INS, to give his opening remark. Um, especially, let me extend my greetings to Sri Mukherjee for accepting our invitation. Even though he's part of INS, I, he deserves a special invitation for that from there. The BRIT is doing a fantastic job, not only promotion of the nuclear energy, but in the societal benefit that he is creating that thing through isotopes, based uh, products, technology, the safe use of it, training of the people, and so on. And I think I don't, don't want to dwell on the board on that one. Let me go to uh, Dr. Mukherjee to bring out all the latest development there and how the society is being benefited. So welcome you again. Thank, thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, for the benefit of our uh, uh, members, though he, you may all know him, but uh, as a protocol, I am going to introduce the speaker to the viewers. Pradeep Mukherjee, outstanding scientist, is an alumnus of Indian Institute of Engineering, Science and Technology, West Bengal. He joined BRC after graduating from BRC Training School in 1988. Pradeep is a nuclear engineer field from more than three decades, and presently he is heading BRIT as a chief executive. A mechanical engineer by profession, his area of expertise is design and construction of research reactor and development of radiation and isotope technology-based products and services. Under his leadership, BRIT could establish itself as a leading organization in the field of production of cobalt-60 irradiator source for radiation processing industry, not only for domestic sector, but also as a 
dominant player in the international market. He has also been instrumental for the development and production of therapeutic isotopes like NO, carrier added uh, lutetium from YB176 using column chromatography methods for the first time in India. He has contributed immensely for the development of cyclotron based PET and SPEC isotopes in recently commissioned 30 billion, billion electron volt IBA cyclotron at Kolkata, India. Important cyclotron produced uh, produce radio pharmaceuticals like gallium, TSAM, gallium uh, DATO, TATE, and thallium 201 has been introduced by Brit under his, leader, under his leadership. To streamline the Pan-India distribution and supply Brit products, he has introduced an IT-based logistic services, which has largely eliminated the hassles of the hospitals and other users of Brit products. The same has been reflected by increase of nearly 40% in revenue of Brit. This is a very significant step. The Mukherjee has 13 publications and abstracts related to scientific and technological research and advancement, which are published and presented in national and international conferences. Sri Mukherjee is a recipient of two awards for his outstanding special contribution towards propulsion project, uh, reactor project. He was also awarded a group of achievement award for successful commissioning of Apsara upgraded reactor at, as a group leader in 2018. Recently, in 2020, he has been honored with Group, group Achievement Award for the development of COCAM 120 Industrial Gamma Radiography Exposure Device used extensively for NDT inspection in heavy engineering industry. So with this, I it's my pleasure and privilege to welcome our today's speaker, Sri Pradeep Mukherjee, to deliver his talk. Thank you, Ramarao, sir. Uh, thank you, Mehta, sir. Uh, it's a real uh, privilege for me uh, to, to speak before such a um, very knowledgeable and uh, fraternity of atomic energy. And uh, today, uh, my topic is role of breed in production and distribution of radio isotope-based products and technologies which is definitely a success story. Uh, definitely, I should not take the credit for this entire success because my producers who has actually laid the foundation for, the, for the, this organization. As we all know, BRIT was uh, initially a part of BARC. The entire research-oriented activities were started in BARC. Sir, it's not moving. Uh, Shall I do it like this? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. And then again, you can make it a uh, light show. I think Mukherjee, you go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, uh, BRIT uh, was a part of BRC, as I was telling. Uh, in 1989, um, it was truncated from BRC because at that particular point of time, it was understood that uh, the commercial activities will be slightly difficult to cater from uh, BRC. And there should be an individual, another organization standalone organization to take care of these commercial activities of the radio isotopes. So the mandate is very clear. The reaching the fruit of the R&D in the field of radio isotope and radiation technology for the societal benefit. And that's the most important part of it. That's why I highlighted it. Production, supply, and distribution of uh, radio isotope products and services and radiation technology equipments in the field of healthcare, agriculture, research, and industry. So basically, 
as i was telling so the idea is that uh, we work in the four areas mainly healthcare agriculture in the healthcare sector we have uh, definitely the radio uh, pharmaceuticals apart from that we have this blood irradiator cobalt teletherapy machines brachytherapy and also the sterilization of the medical products uh, for the agriculture the main uh, focus is uh, that is the mutation of seeds and flowers etc which is the mainly the r and d part of it is being done in the ftd uh, in brc as we all know and from our side there is a huge um, uh, amount of uh, focus is there towards the hygienization of food and phytosanitary treatment for the cell and cell life extension of the uh, agro based products uh, mainly uh, spices uh, all agricultural products and those sort of things then in the industrial sector we have uh, this isotope application service mainly used by uh, the petrochemical industries and of course any process industries as such so that is the major uh, major emphasis on this and in the research part we have certain equipments uh, by which like gamma chamber uh, by which the academic institution also get uh, get to know and do the studies and research on the various aspects of the effect of radiation on various materials and others so if i uh, go through uh, the life cycle of a radio isotope it looks like this so we should have a target material which has to be put either in a reactor or in an accelerator then it will it will be activated the isotope will be produced and then uh, it will be a lot of many numbers of isotopes will be produced and from there uh, that particular isotope of concern has to be taken out which is called the purification and the pre processing and then it has to be packaged in a, uh, in a ready to use form we have to do uh, some quality control and then uh, we have to uh, we have to make the proper logistic arrangement and then it goes to the uh, customer and then from the customer it goes to the disposal and then after the disposal again it goes to the in case of a gold 60 um, so when you use the high specific activity cobalt and after some time it decays down so it comes back to us and then we utilize it for some low specific activity and finally when everything is finished it goes for the disposal so that's the, the normal life cycle of a radio isotope so first we'll uh, talk about the healthcare uh, mainly these are the these are the mainly the healthcare related isotopes which uh, breet is uh, uh, handling as we know iodine 131 was the first isotope somewhere in 1960s uh, this was developed in brc and uh, presently dhruva reactor is the main source as because we don't have cyrus and it is you it is uh, produced by uh, bombarding tellurium and getting that n gamma molecule and it is available in the sodium iodide oral solution and is used normally for iodine 131 mivg or oral capsules or sometimes in the oral form itself and the use is both uh, therapeutic and diagnostic and before i start this slide actually i must uh, give a little bit introduction about uh, this uh, isotopes mainly the radio pharmaceuticals which we are using they are used for uh, two applications one is the diagnostic application which is the major uh, things uh, till few years before uh, and then the therapeutic application this therapeutic application as we will go through the slides we will come to know the application of radio isotopes in the therapeutic sectors it is uh, becoming more and more demand demanding so that we'll see it later so iodine 131 
Molly 99. Molly 99, of course, it can be produced in two ways, both uh, from the Engama route, uh, but that particular activity of, uh, specific activity of two Engama route, it is slightly low. It is around 20 curie uh, per milligram. So which is not, uh, not a very good for production of the generator. Uh, that is technetium, uh, moly technetium generator. And so that's why another route is there, fission moly, fission uh, route. Uh, so I'll come in later for this. Uh, and uh, as we all know, this is used for the spec isotope and used for the diagonistic part. I have given in the table the kind of revenue we are earning. Uh, of course, at the end of the uh, end of my talk, I'll give you the total picture uh, uh, of uh, breeds revenue already. As we have, we know that is lutetium-177, another isotope, very important isotopes used for the therapeutic application. And as I was telling before, the therapeutic isotope applications uh, is increasing day by day. And a lot of people now uh, is depending, especially the hospitals, they are getting more and more order of the lutetium. Uh, and there are two routes are there. One is uh, from the uh, bombarding the lutetium-176 uh, in Bruva reactor. There we'll get lutetium-176 is converted into 177, but the uh, lutetium, what we get from that, uh, it is basically a mixture of 176 and 177. So um, it is called carrier added lutetium. Now there is one more route that is called the direct route where we, uh, we irradiate uh, ytterbium-176 and from there, no carrier added uh, lutetium is produced. Now, what is this the carrier added and no carrier added? Uh, right now in uh, India, we have this carrier added uh, lutetium, uh, carrier added lutetium, but whatever the, uh, Lutetium, we are procuring it from outside. Those are no carrier added. The difference, uh, I mean, I, I mean, the opinion about this carrier and no carrier, it is totally diverged. Some doctors prefer uh, carrier added is all right. Some doctors prefer no carrier added. Basic disadvantage or advantage of uh, these things are like this. Uh, as you can see in the third, uh, fourth column, where you are talking about the products, we are having the products like uh, lutetium PSMA, lutetium rotatate, lutetium HA, lutetium EDTMP. These are the different products which we are selling it to the market. Uh, now, this PSMA is called the ligand, and this is all peptide-based. Uh, this peptide-based uh, ligand consumption for producing a particular dose is more in case of a carrier added. And when it is a no carrier added, the quantity will be less. Now question is this particular ligand, if it goes to a certain level, this peptide based ligand, first of all, it is quite expensive. And if it is used uh, more than a particular quantity, that is harmful for the human body. So, uh, when we are using uh, carrier added lutetium, it consumes more amount of PSMA or more amount of dotate for producing a particular dose. Uh, but some definitely it is not crossing that limit. So some, uh, some of our doctors are happy with that. Uh, but uh, some doctors are telling that no, we should try to reduce it. So anyway, the op my opinion differs. But by the way, right now we have carrier added lutetium right now available in India. And we are in the process of making no carrier added lutetium, which uh, we are expecting, we have already produced it. And as we all know, the procedure is very uh, complicated to get the regulatory approval, which is the in-house uh, regulatory body in our uh, DA, uh, that is Radio Pharmaceutical Committee. That Radio Pharmaceutical Committee uh, normally takes some uh, three to six months, because we have to produce uh, at least six batches of uh, the same, uh, same uh, medicine. And we have to see the repeatability, we have to show the repeatability of all the parameters. So those things are going on. 
and uh, i hope uh, by the end of this year we should be able to have this no career added also uh, in our kitchen and as you know that fluorine 18 is one of the major uh, very important isotope which is produced in uh, cyclotron and right now we have two cyclotrons uh, which department runs and one is the mcf parel parel which was the first cyclotron in india as you all know and recently uh, during the time of pandemic uh, cyclone 30 uh, in kolkata there is a 30 mev cyclotron which is right now is the biggest uh, cyclotron in india that has been already commissioned and it has already started its functioning uh, although it took a lot of time but anyway right now uh, we have already produced uh, fluorine 18 from there we have already started uh, uh, supplying fdg sodium fluoride and fme so also from there and uh, uh, the thing is that uh, uh, 30 mev cyclotron is definitely too big for making only fluorine there are many many Uh, molecules many many isotopes are going to come in a time in some few months or few years time uh, so i'll come later to that cobalt 60 as you know it is used for the teletherapy source and uh, this teletherapy source has been extensively used in babatron cesium 137 is uh, normally we use it for blood irradiator and recently uh, last to last year it has been introduced that ruthenium 106 i plate used for uh, treating the eye cancer now this particular slide i wanted to show you just to emphasize how the growth of uh, this um, therapeutic radioisotope has increased in last one year this lutetium dota and lutetium psma it is right now you can see the below graph is there that how it has been increased it is giving almost i mean we are somewhere somewhere around 160 curie of lutetium dota and somewhere around 140 curie of uh, uh, lutetium psma we are selling it per year which is a huge amount i mean total uh, number of patients it will cover it's enormous amount Actually, this particular thing was not the case in July 19 uh, sort of thing. You can see because there is a recently there is a change in the protocol of uh, the patient treatment using lutetium uh, PSM and lutetium DOTA. Lutetium PSM, as you know, it is used for the prostate cancer, and lutetium DOTA is used for the neuroendocrine cancer therapy. And uh, recently, there is a change in the protocol for. Uh, the application of lutetium for the patients uh, this arb has changed in fact that has caused uh, that is one of the reason for increasing this number to a large extent see initially uh, there was a requirement that uh, the hospital should have a delay decay tank uh, for all those uh, patients who will be administered the lutetium 177 um but uh, that that and the patient has to be admitted for at least a week and then the treatment can go on so that was uh, slightly uh, slightly odd in fact no where in the world actually the lutetium uh, treatment hey, is done in this way and so when it has been pointed out then that time then arb reviewed the situation and then now the lutetium uh, patients can be treated in outdoor as a opd patient so this actually has changed the scenario and uh, so you can see the number uh, the graph actually shows the kind of uh, increase in the patients of lutetium uh, uh, different drugs like psa psa band dota now this is just i wanted to show some of the radio pharmaceutical production facility what we have right now in brit and uh, as you can see on the left hand side that iodine 131 mibg uh, production facility this is a uh, uh, this is a facility which actually uh, has been procured from itd germany and the right hand side that facility we have built it Uh, by our own expertise and whatever the sources available here so you can see that there is a difference uh, in overall uh, you know aesthetics and those things but i think we are not very much far off 
maybe in a couple of years, we'll also be able to produce this kind of facility uh, by in-house management. Uh, so these are the basically the uh, recently we have launched this uh, radio pharmaceuticals. Lutetium-177 uh, uh, leveled hydroxy appetite. It is not a cancer medicine. It is normally, it is used for the rheumatic uh, arthritic uh, patients. Uh, similarly, uh, yttrium-90 leveled hydroxy appetite. This is also used for uh, the same purpose. Ruthenium-106 plate, as I, make, as I told you, it is used for the eye cancer. Um, we have also, uh, uh, also introduce this Hynek RGD injection. This is for neuroendocrine. And uh, these are the last two of the recent introduction from the Kolkata team. Uh, that is Thallium 201. As you all know, Thallium is used for the myocardial infusion. And uh, uh, some of our stalliers in this field, uh, they once uh, dreamed that Thallium can actually replace the requirement of angiogram. Recently, um, uh, we invited uh, Dr. Lele um, uh, in our uh, 15th August program. So while uh, chit-chatting with him, uh, she was very much uh, hopeful <coughs> that one day uh, this thallium uh, scan, thallium scan uh, can really replace it because thallium is, uh, thalliums can actually show uh, whether all those arteries which is there in the uh, there in the heart that is uh, getting the blood properly or not now only thing it cannot show uh, whether the there is a blockage and what percentage of blockage those things thallium cannot show but thallium definitely can show whether the blood is reaching in a particular muscle or not which is the more important thing because nature has given a lot of uh, uh, bypass channels uh, by which your, blood, which your heart can get the blood circulation. So just one or two arteries goes blocked and immediately going for the bypass surgery on the angioplasty uh, may not be required as such. So I don't know, maybe after some time, uh, this uh, thallium scan, thallium scan is a very old scan, but uh, and it is very popular in uh, US. And as I understand in the US, uh, the insurance company do not pay for angioplasty or bypass if a thallium scan is not carried out. But here the case is completely different. And because the major issue is that in USA, the thallium, since it is a um, radio pharmaceuticals, uh, it, in India, it has to be used by only by nuclear medicine practitioner, but in US, it can be, it, uh, the cardiologist also use thallium. So maybe that is the difference. There is a requirement of a change in this uh, attitude. So thallium can also be very popular. Of course, uh, uh, technetium maybe is another alternate uh, nuclear medicine which also uh, give a similar kind of uh, picture of heart, but definitely thallium pictures are much more clearer. And we also uh, started gallium 68, PSMA gallium 68 dota from uh, Kolkata cyclotron. This gallium 68 can be produced by uh, normally, uh, see, see the problem is the 68, uh, around one hour is a half life for gallium. So, um, Normally, people and this is a very, very, uh, very good uh, pet uh, uh, pet isotope for diagnosis, and a lot of demand is there. But since the, because it's a very low half life, so people normally prefer for a germanium gallium generator, so that they can have the generator at their hospitals and they can elude it at what uh, the time they require. Uh, but the thing is that, uh, first of all, germanium production is very expensive route. And the germanium gallium generator, a 50 uh, millicurie generator, normally costs around 40 lakhs. So it becomes too expensive. Whereas gallium 68 can be uh, produced uh, by bombarding uh, zinc 68 using a proton beam. 
uh, in region 68 and the quantity of gallium what we get uh, that is also quite large but only issue is that uh, it can be distributed in a very smaller uh, area network because of the very low half life and on the right hand side we can see the products which are in pipeline uh, which pipeline means basically i have given those uh, products which are waiting for the RPC clearance. We, we have already submitted our papers, but the RPC review is going on. As I was telling, lutetium, uh, NCA lutetium, and NCA lutetium based pharmaceutical. Now, here actually, I want to emphasize recently we are, uh, we have completed. In fact, a day before yesterday, we have completed uh, this fission molly uh, commissioning, 100% run. So as I was telling in the beginning, the molly is a very important spectra isotope and used for diagnosis. And this can be produced in two routes. One is the N-gamma route. You would bombard molly 98 with uh, neutron. And by using N-gamma route, you will get a molly 99. But the specific activity of that particular molly is quite low. Uh, it is not good uh, for making a generator uh, from which actually you can get the technetium because molly as such is not injected inside the human body. It is a technetium which is injected. So molly is kept inside a alumina column and then it has to be eluded. Uh, and when we go for the fission root molly, on what is this fission root molly? Basically, uh, in a reactor, we, we uh, do fission for the LEU targets and we fission it for five days. And after five days, the fission plates, it is it has taken out and then it is dissolved in, a, in this particular plant, it is an alkaline uh, dissolution. And then after dissolution, the molly is taken out and it is purified. And then finally, it is converted into a medical grade molly. So that's the entire process. As you can see, the LU targets, uh, which is there on my, my left hand side. And these targets are there in this uh, kind of channels where each channel is having six plates and uh, have six plates. And then these irradiated plates, which comes to the molybdenum 99 production facility, where we have a series of hot cells, where first it will be dissolved and then it will be uh, purified and then it will be uh, absorbed in the column and then finally it will be eluded. So, uh, so this is the way finally uh, molly 99, it's a very high specific activity molly, which is approximately around uh, which we in N gamma moly, which we are getting at around 20 QD per uh, milligram. Here it will be around 10 to 12,000 milliQD, uh, sorry, 10 to 12,000 QD per milligram. So that's the kind of difference between the fission moly and the normal N gamma moly. So this was, a, this was a dream for the department for quite a long time. And I'm very proud to uh, tell this uh, August audience that we have successfully completed the 100% commissioning trial day before yesterday, and we could achieve the expected quantity of molly which, which we could get from this particular plant. Now, after this uh, uh, molly is uh, produced in the plant, then it is uh, taken to another uh, generator production facility, which we are already having one in uh, grade. Another is uh, in the process of making it. So basically, they will produce a, something like a, this is called a cold tech generator. Now, in the cold tech generator, if you see, uh, this is basically the uh, belly portion of it. And here is the alumina, alumina column. And alumina column, on this side, you put, a, uh, you put the sterile water or a saline water. And here, uh, evacuated vial will be there. This will go and elude. This molly is here, adsorbed here, and this will be eluded and it goes to this particular vial where the technetium will come. Now this technetium is uh, then it uh, having a lot of uh, kits, which is called the cold kits. We have around uh, 20 odd cold kits are there, which also uh, Brit is producing. 
and uh, they labeled it with this kit and then uh, it, it is basically uh, labeling part something we do it ourselves and give it as a ready to inject and but most of the cases we give the generator itself and on the hospital end uh, it is done because the half life of uh, technetium is low now this is the salient features of uh, this particular plant uh, of course this has cost us around 300 crore and uh, this will be able to produce around 300 curie of moly 99 with a six day calibration i mean six day calibration means after six day it will be 300 curie <clears throat> so on the day of production it will be approximately 1400 curie but it is uh, it depends upon the flux uh, in the tune of around 1.8 into 10 to the power 8 but with the available flux of tuba which is slightly low we could get approximately 150 to 160 curie uh, moly which can be produced per week and of course, the, our requirement uh, for the entire domestic demand of Molly is approximately 60 to 70 QV per week. And um, uh, definitely we'll be having some kind of excess uh, Molly, which, uh, which we are uh, right now talking with some strategic partners uh, who will be ready to take their Molly from us, convert it into generator and send it to the neighboring countries like uh, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and all these things. So this uh, talk is going on. So maybe after a, a year or so, we should be able to um, get some kind of a news from this side. And one thing, one more thing I want to emphasize on this, that uh, the, like Molly, actually, the iodine also is produced in the same way. I mean, the absolute, actual yield of Molly is approximately 6%, theoretically, whereas the iodine is approximately 3%. So uh, whatever the molly is produced, almost <coughs> sorry, almost half of it. Almost half uh, uh, quantity of iodine will be also produced. So this is uh, uh, right now our plan is to implement another project uh, so that we can also extract iodine 131 from the irradiated LLU target. And definitely it will augment, it will add to our that Ngama Molly, what we are getting it from uh, Tuba. It will add to it. And uh, the country's demand of iodine is quite high. We are actually not able to meet the entire demand, maybe around 30 to 40%. Actually, we are meeting it with uh, um, at present with the Ngama Molly. Uh, definitely some of the time, because Ruba is quite old, our uh, facility in BRC is also quite old. So sometimes it gives some kind of trouble. So doctors are not uh, sometimes feels very unhappy with our pay. So maybe those things uh, can be avoided if we are able to produce a substantial quantity of fission iodine uh, from this. And this is just a picture of uh, this blood irradiator, as you all know, blood irradiator is uh, to irradiate the blood to uh, uh, irradiated blood are normally uh, used uh, for uh, transfusing the patients which we, who are having this uh, immunodeficiency. So like a kidney transplant patient, if they require a blood transfusion, uh, so the normal blood can, cannot be given because uh, there's some kind of a T lymphocyte is there, which actually is to required to be uh, killed because if T lymphocyte of one person and goes to the other uh, immunosuppressive uh, patient, so it can be it can be a fatal sometimes. So normally uh, doctors do not take any risk. So whatever whenever they do it, they irradiate the blood. There are other ways also X-rays and other things, but this is one of the very unique products from our side. We have already sold around 64 uh, bloody radiator uh, till date. Uh, initially, it was started uh, quite a long back, but uh, initially it was started with cobalt. But uh, unfortunately, cobalt was having only five and a half years or 5.2 years of uh, uh, 5.2 years of half life. Uh, so, it just two three years back, we started converting all these things to cesium-137 because. Our WMD could give a good quality of cesium-137 tensils. 
So this we are right now using it. And as you all know that cesium is having a, a half-life of 30 years. So naturally the longevity of the machine will be quite long. So the next thing I wanted to tell you about our success story for the Cyclone uh, 30, Kolkata. As I told in the beginning that we have already started producing thallium, gallium, and gallium also we are uh, uh, doing it, gallium PSMA, gallium DOTA. And uh, we have also started uh, FDG. In fact, FDG was the first one to start. And then uh, we also introduced uh, sodium fluoride for bone scan. And these are, uh, these are the actually, as I told you in the beginning, 30 MeV cyclotron is too weak for making the FDG alone. But FDG definitely is a um, most sellable, quant uh, sellable product. Uh, but definitely, if you are uh, making FDG, uh, if you are making from 30 MeV cyclotron only FDG, and that will be a crime. So basically, this was, uh, uh, this was, um, constructed with a vision that a lot of others, uh, other radioisotopes should be produced. And uh, I'm proud to say that our Kolkata team is doing extremely good. And uh, they have recently uh, able to establish the procedure for making germanium 68. As I was telling, germanium 68 is normally used uh, as, in, um, as a generator in the generator to produce gallium. And uh, the germanium gallium generator technology uh, has been already established and it has got an approval from RPC. So we are waiting for right now to have a sufficient quantity of germanium uh, so that we can start making this germanium gallium generator, which is a really, really expensive uh, at this particular point of time. As I told, a 50 millicurie generator costs nearly 30 to 40 lakhs. In fact, more than 40 lakhs. Whereas our products will be definitely able to sell it maybe half or maybe slightly more than that. There is another uh, uh, another one which uh, we are planning to introduce that is gallium 67 uh, citrate, which is used for uh, this uh, soft tissue tumor and uh, bronchogenic tumor. These are all beta isotopes. Uh, these are in the pipeline. And uh, from the xenon target, this is a gaseous target, we are also in the process of pro uh, procuring this xenon target handling. Thing is in a very advanced stage. We are going to procure it from that module. That particular module will be procuring it from uh, IBA, and uh, we'll be able to produce this uh, sodium iodide with iodine one twenty three. Basically, it is for thyroid gland, but normally used for uh, the somewhat uh, younger patient. Palladium is another isotope, which uh, another isotope used for prostate cancer we are in the process of developing. But uh, so far, I, I can't say much of a development, but these are something which we are thinking in the uh, down the line three to four years. This is one thing I wanted to, uh, this, is, uh, this was a dream of Dr. Banerjee. And uh, in fact, it was started quite a long back, maybe around 2011 or so. But there was a lot of, uh, this is the uh, Kirk Nidhan. Uh, this is a high, um, high dose uh, brachytherapy machine. And uh, in fact, this was going on from 2011, but uh, recently the technology of this particular machine has been transferred successfully to Mrs. Panacea. And I hope uh, they'll be able to take it uh, to the, in a more aggressive way to the Indian uh, uh, hospitals. The major issue for this uh, brachytherapy, as you all know, this brachytherapy is normally, there are two types of therapy, one is teletherapy and is brachytherapy. 
In this brachytherapy, you are taking the source very in, uh, near to that uh, tumor and uh, using the radiation you are trying to destroy. It. And uh, this brachytherapy uh, machine, the major uh, difficulty was to produce that miniature source, and which is having a 10 curie uh, Iridia 192 source, and which was extremely difficult. As you can see in the bottom, I have tried to give a, some kind of a uh, feeling about this source. <coughs> this is hardly 0.8 mm diameter and length may be something in the uh, range of around 2 to 3 mm. So this particular source, it has to be put physically inside and then it has to be uh, welded uh, with a, a leisure welding and, and that has to be done uh, inside a hot cell. So this was a real challenge and uh, I'm very much uh, proud to state that uh, with the help of RRCAD, who they, they have developed a machine basically for uh, doing not only the laser welding, but also uh, making the proper fixtures and do the robotics also to uh, do a in, uh, large number of this therapy source. And we have already established it. And now Panacea and uh, uh, Beat will be working together to basically market these things to a large scale. And uh, I hope uh, the Indian doctors will accept it. Those who are uh, practicing brachytherapy will accept our product because definitely it will be much less uh, in price, not only less in price, but the most important part of it's uh, that we, we will be giving the indigenous source to them. So that's the most important part of it. Now I'll come, uh, so this is uh, uh, for the healthcare per se. Now, as I was telling in the beginning, we are working on the three verticals. One is uh, uh, healthcare, second is the engineering, and third, which is covering uh, both the research and the industry, that is the services. So right now, uh, I'll be talking more about this engineering aspect. In the engineering sectors, basically, one of the most important thing is the industrial radiography devices. As you all know that this was started quite a long back and this is the way from 1992 to 2011, uh, this Roli cameras, these are all Iridium 192 cameras. This has come, but, uh, but I, I'm not very much happy uh, with this, uh, our performance with this, uh, because the uh, most important part of it that we use lead uh, for uh, as a shielding material for this, which is uh, which makes it slightly bulky. And naturally, the industry uh, do not like a bulky things because sometimes they may have to take it to a, a place where lift it, and those. Uh, I mean, it is a, some kind of inconvenience. So. Um, and problem is that all those uh, all those imported cameras, they are using the depleted uranium. So naturally, uh, the sizes of those size, even the weight also, is quite quite smaller. So people are going for it. So as an alternate, we have developed because depleted uranium is slightly difficult to get it. So that's why we have developed. Uh, another uh, another uh, camera, which we are calling it as Rotex One, and this we have already established it, and we are in the last leg of getting the AERB approval. And as soon as we get the AERB approval, it will come into the market. And basically, here uh, it is a very ergonomically looking, as you can see, just having a lot of good features of the safety and the security of the sources. And it is having the belly with the tungsten only, and which has made it a very, very light. And the price also is a very attractive price. And uh, I think we should be able to give it something in the tune of around 10 lakhs. Whereas uh, the imported camera of this sort will be nothing less than 15 lakhs. And in the last year, actually, we have uh, developed this uh, cobalt based camera, which was not there initially. But here also the same issue is there. I'll come back. Uh, the cobalt-based camera, as you all know, it, it definitely requires more amount of shielding than uh, iridium. 
so here actually we tried a very complicated hybrid shielding, which is consists of a depleted uranium, tungsten, and lead, and we could able to uh, maintain a weight something in the range of around 300 odd kg, and uh, as we all know that it is used normally used for the uh, heavy engineering industry, boiler industry, where the large thickness of uh, material uh, radiography is required to be uh, carried out. Uh, had we have this uh, entire depleted uranium, I mean, could make it uh, by using depleted uranium, the weight would have been reduced to around 270 to 280 kg. Um, but uh, unfortunately, that particular thing is still going on. We are not come up to that stage. So, and as an alternate, we have also started making <clears throat> the entire thing by tungsten. And uh, cost-wise also, as you can see, the uh, imported cost uh, is around 50 lakhs, whereas we could give it around 32 lakhs. Now, as I was telling, this is one of the very uh, unique uh, type of uh, equipment uh, but uh, we are making it. And uh, in fact, we are the only, uh, only organization who makes this kind of uh, equipment, which is used uh, by the academicians and the universities uh, to, to see the effect of radiation on various materials. It can be even a paint also, it can be even a food products also, anything. So, uh, we have sold so far around 50 odd unit and around 14 units have gone abroad also. Recently, we have an order with Brazil, uh, but unfortunately there's some logistic issues, so they are not able to take it, but uh, we are going to send it to Brazil maybe in a couple of months time. And uh, this is a unique thing which uh, Brit is making. Uh, that is the tritium fill light source. Uh, this tritium, as you know, uh, it is put inside a glass tube and it emits uh, beta and then it reacts with some uh, chemicals and it forms the illumination. And this is a very low level of uh, lumen it generates. So it is uh, hardly visible up to 50 feet or so, uh, or maybe around, sorry, 50 meters or so. So this is mostly used uh, by the defense or Ministry of Defense, uh, mainly as I am showing you here, the uh, uh, tank is moving over a canal. Uh, so when a tank has to move uh, during the night time, so they should know exactly this makeshift bridge or something. They should know the uh, ages of the bridge. So what they do they put this tritium filled uh, light sources at the edge of it so that exactly uh, the tank can be guided. So these are some of the applications of the tritium filled light sources. As you can see, it is made in different, uh, different shapes. And also it is used uh, in front of the gun for, uh, uh, for basically doing this, uh, um, exact pointing the target and those kind of things. And I'm showing it, uh, if you, if you sw switch it, I mean, if it is in, in during the light, daylight, it will look like this. And if you switch off the light, it will start glowing. And uh, we can definitely use it for other purposes like your exit lamp and those kind of things in the uh, auditorium. So this is uh, for the engineering purpose. And uh, sorry, the most important thing I forgot to do. So most uh, sellable product for uh, BRIT is the cobalt 60 pencil. These cobalt 60 high specific activity pencils uh, it is used for all this radiation processing plants. And radiation processing plants means basically for the medical product sterilization and uh, the food product uh, hygienization or 
self life in trees and those kind of things and these pencils are available uh, in uh, two different forms which is called a w91 pencil and a dc180 pencil basically these are um, the quantity of source a quantity of radioactivity uh, inside these pencils and we have a plan it was built quite a long back this uh, RAPP uh, cobalt facility, which was in uh, Kota, which is in Kota, which is basically uh, uh, doing its job very well. At present, uh, although we are having a capacity of the plant is around 3 million curie, but we are doing it with overtime and everything. It is around 6 million curie because the uh, demand for this cobalt has increased a lot. And uh, this is our main revenue earner, as you can see. Uh, yeah, we earned around 100 crore from selling this thing, uh, cobalt source to the various uh, uh, radiation processing plant, not only in the domestic sectors, but also we are earning around 50 to 60 crore rupees, sometimes 80 crore rupees uh, by exporting it to various countries like Canada, England, uh, Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia, um, Sri Lanka, and these are the countries actually we are selling it. And with the present uh, market situation, in the, specifically in the international market, the demand for Indian cobalt has increased a lot. And uh, we have more and more opportunities uh, to establish ourselves as a leading player of cobalt 60 <coughs> yeah, exporter. Cobalt 60 exporter. And uh, the most important part of it, uh, we have now this 700 megawatt uh, plant, NPC plant, which is expected to produce this uh, from the absorber rod. They are going to produce this uh, uh, cobalt and which will be converted into this kind of pencil in our facility. And uh, that will augment our production capability from four to six million to around 14 to 15 million QD, where actually we should be able to take care of the export market very well. So now coming to the service part of it, as I was telling, uh, the industrial isotope application service is one of the important service which we offer. And this is used uh, for basically for diagnosis and troubleshooting of the process plant. Normally it is used by the petrochemical industries, refineries, petrochemical units. Uh, ONGC. It also used by heavy engineering sometimes and is used for the dams and sports, sports and uh, in the thermal power plant. But mostly our customers are mainly the <coughs> petrochemical industries and ONGC. Uh, we do this uh, diagnosis uh, for troubleshooting of the process problem. We give the solution and uh, which basically reduce the shutdown time for this. Uh, plant and uh, uh, one of the one or two uh, items I can tell you. I mean, we, we, we do this uh, uh, column scanning. Uh, you must be knowing about these columns, various columns, as you can see in the left hand side. These are the petrochemical industry columns. So these columns, when uh, it requires some kind of a maintenance, but there is a blockage or something, we have this gamma scanning facility by which you can exactly check it up and tell without uh, disturbing much for the production system. I mean, your production can go on and uh, uh, we can identify the defect there. So that's why it is very popular in the industry. And uh, all, our, all the petrochemical industries, HP, BP, IOCL, all refineries, we take care of it. <laughs> Uh, in this particular application service, we have two types of uh, application service. One is a seal source, which is I told in the gamma scanning for the uh, process columns. Uh, gamma scanning for the pipelines and vessels. We also do the radiometry, the radiation shielding uh, objects. And this peak tracking in the pipelines, in the peak tracking basically if, uh, when they use a peak uh, for cleaning the buried piping or the large diameter piping, sometimes this pig gets uh, stuck 
So it becomes very extremely difficult for a long pipeline, maybe 40 kilometers, 50 kilometers, sometimes 200 kilometers long pipeline where actually the pig got uh, stuck. So in this case, what do we do? We just put a small source, cobalt source in this, and we, we keep uh, uh, in a particular distance <coughs> our uh, sensors and we can detect exactly where uh, the pig got uh, stuck and it can be recovered very fast. So this is a very, uh, very, uh, it can reduce the uh, downtime of uh, our plant and that is their downtime means basically the profit increases that way, the revenue increases. We also have this radio tracer techniques. Basically, radio tracer techniques are normally used for the leaky heat exchangers. And uh, uh, we, we put the Molly 99 in a, um, not in the aqueous solution, but in the oil form. Uh, we put it, inject it, and then uh, the petrochemical industries, we can find it out exactly uh, which of the, which heat exchanger has, a, because it's a series of heat exchanger normally. And then uh, which particular heat exchanger is leaking we, we come to know very well. And uh, oil field tritium transaction injection is uh, normally used by WNGC. Uh, in Bombay High, they take us there. We inject the tritium in the uh, different wells and uh, see the behavior of those uh, tritium. And then we can easily find out whether a particular well has been dried or not. And then they should not invest more time on that. Then fire disposal study is another important thing. As we all know, for this uh, power plants, this fly ash is a big headache. So what they do is make a slurry of the fly ash and put it, dump it in the coal mines or something. Uh, so uh, what is found that this uh, fly ash, it uh, percolate and get mixed with the groundwater. So uh, nowadays this MOFPI, uh, sorry, uh, MO, uh, Ministry of Environment and Forest, MOEF, uh, they ask for this uh, particular uh, exercise to be carried out. So we add some, uh, inject some radio tracer in this fly ash and see the movement of this fly ash and whether it is getting mixed with the groundwater or not. So this is one of the biggest area of what we are doing. So this way, actually, uh, we are helping the industries. As you can see, there are plenty of our customers. l &T also is there. Uh, all the petrochemical industries that we were studying. Then uh, this is another uh, radiation processing service. As we all know, it is around 2000. In the year 2000, the first radiation processing plant, which was first uh, uh, was established at uh, Washi. And this is the recently uh, IAA team came. So uh, they have inspected our facility. And uh, in fact, uh, they have given good uh, remarks for this. And uh, around 4,520 uh, uh, tons of spices and allied products uh, uh, normally are uh, processed in our plant. It is around 5,000 to 6,000 in this order in a year. And uh, apart from the food products also, we, we do some other services like uh, pressure transmitter, valves, cables, installation materials, RTD, etc. Uh, they are also uh, given some doses of gamma radiation for qualification of the vendors. So this is another activity. And uh, I hope uh, within a few months time, we should be able to establish, we should be able to commission our first, uh, first effort to um, build a cryo irradiator. Cryo irradiator in the sense which will be mostly used for uh, the marine products. Um, as we all know, the marine products when it is harvested in the deep sea, it is kept inside the refrigerator and that Cold chain is to be maintained. So the and when it comes to when it will come to our place, the gamma chamber. I mean the, the during the time of gamma irradiation, uh, that temperature is to be maintained. So that was the major challenge, and uh, and the most of the things have been already made. 
And I hope in another two to three months time, we should be able to establish it and start uh, doing its operation for the marine products. And uh, FTD is closely associated with us. And we are also approaching uh, the various uh, uh, big fish uh, exporter or fish uh, uh, wholesaler, so they can utilize our facility and to get the benefit out of it. So this may come somewhere in the month of December. <clears throat> and uh, as I was talking about this uh, irradiator irradiation plant, and as you can see, all over the India, we have almost 30 odd irradiator has already established. The first one, definitely that in 2000, we have established in uh, Washi and uh, then uh, uh, Lassam Gaon. And uh, that is the two plants what department are having. But this technology has been well accepted by the uh, by nation. And uh, now in the private sector also, they have started utilizing this particular technology and using it for uh, various uh, products, especially medical products, sterilization anyway, it, it, is, it was always there. But for the agro products also, it has been started. As you all know, these mangoes which are going from uh, India to US, those are to be giving a phytosanitary treatment. And that phytosanitary treatment is only possible by gamma. And now it has been well established. And recently I came to know that uh, ERC has uh, developed that technology uh, that protocol uh, for sending it by the ship uh, sea route, and so that the kind of uh, kind of uh, transportation charges, which was very much quite high, maybe during the time of uh, during the time of uh, COVID, it was something around 600 to 700 rupees per kg of mango, which may come down to maybe around 75 to 100 rupees per kg. So definitely the cost of ma Indian mango and uh, in uh, US uh, definitely is going to be cheaper from the next year. I, I, I am really hopeful about it. Other than this, we, we have some other small, small services uh, like this radio analytical services. Radio analytical services means basically, uh, you know, I mean, when, this is mainly used for the export purpose. Whenever the, any agro product is being exported, uh, the customers, they want a certificate from grid that there is no man-made uh, radioactivity is inside that uh, particular uh, commodity. So that actually we, we, we do give this service. Dosimetry, as we all know that uh, dosimetry is required for this all this radiation processing plant. Um, when you are going to start and you have to basically see whether the dose has been properly given uh, to the entire uh, length and breadth and depth of the packaging box. Uh, so basically that determines the dose uniformity ratio. Um, so I'm not going to the detail of it, but this is a very important activity for which which is doing. And apart from that, also we have a small calibration laboratory where <clears throat> all those uh, equipments which required calibration, basically the gamma sensing equipment and uh, those things. So those we are doing it at our uh, facility. Now I want to give a brief about our distribution logistic, which was a real challenge, uh, and but we could able to give our uh, customers a really satisfying mood. So as I told, our customer's experience is the most important. Customer satisfaction is the most important thing. And we have uh, three sectors uh, by which we are trying to take care of our customers. We have an e-portal system, which uh, takes care of their entire, uh, uh, now it's working. Uh, e-portal system where they can place the order, they can, uh, see uh, what is the status of the order. And uh, we arrange the door delivery, uh, door delivery of the products. And this e-portal is available uh, uh, in, through in the computer, but even in, we have made an Android application, which is called Bridbandhu. 
uh, and this grid one through Android application, those who require it, they uh, download it and uh, and they can take get all the information regarding their orders, uh, their logistic requirement and everything, those things they can get it. This is the e-portal and uh, this is the online sales portal of BID. This is the one-stop destination for all order related information. Basically the hospitals, they register in our e-portal and order all the products. Every products are having a particular number so they can do it. <clears throat> and Basically, the key features of the e-portal is like this. All the products, details, and the dispatch schedules are given. Online uh, for this NOC is required, uh, which is required to be uploaded, and it can be verified both by a AERB and then uh, both by uh, anybody. I mean, breed and the party, they can check whether that NOC, because normally any, any whenever the uh, uh, hospitals, they want to, uh, start a new business, uh, operating a new business of radio uh, nuclear medicine, they have to get the NOC for that particular radio isotopes. So that NOC, there is some kind of a validity. So those, everything is, uh, things are already uploaded for a particular, suppose uh, um, just low hospital, they want to get lutetium from us. So they can check whether the AERB NOC, which was issued to them, whether it has been uh, expired or not. If it is expired, they can immediately talk to AERB and uh, apply, reapply for that. Then online order placement by the customers, definitely that is one part of it, most important. But all the status tracking, that is uh, recently we have introduced an IT enabled uh, logistic system where they can get a dynamic uh, location of their order. This is an e invoicing. We have a Bharat Coast payment uh, gateway also and online tracking of the consignment. So basically a Bridgwandhu app, as you can see, uh, it is something like an Amazon uh, app as you use. So uh, like in Amazon, whenever you uh, make some uh, order, you, you get exactly what, what is the location of it, whether it has come out <clears throat> and those kind of things. All details you will get it here. So I am very much proud to say that we must, we have almost covered the entire length and breadth of India. And this is our uh, hospitals where uh, regularly we are uh, supplying our nuclear medicines. And uh, as I told you, the real time hacking uh, uh, proof of dispatch is uh, there. And this, uh, one of the most important thing that the generators which are, uh, they procure it and that uh, that is normally used for a week. And then after the week, it, they have to re return it. So that pickup also we have organized. We also give the transit equipment, uh, transit insurance and the requirement because all these nuclear medicines are considered as a dangerous goods. So uh, handling of these dangerous goods in, in uh, the airlines is having certain issues, certain guidelines are required to be followed. So all these things are followed in this entire logistic systems. So at the end, I just want to know, uh, I want to tell uh, our uh, esteemed uh, uh, gatherings that this is the uh, growth of wheat for the last few years, I take it the 10 years, and it was definitely an organic growth, but in the last years, just you see the introduction of the <clears throat> logistic system it has really jumped into a large extent. And in fact, uh, this is the first time uh, BRIT has made a revenue in the tune of around 180 plus crore. And uh, our, on the bottom of the graph, it is showing our revenue expenditure. So the revenue expenditure is this much only. So we have a gap, something in the tune of approximately um, 70, Crore rupees. So we don't call it a profit as such, but had it been, uh, this is profit before tax, you can say like that. <clears throat> uh, but definitely we are not a company uh, as such, the companies uh, act. 
So definitely we cannot call it and we make it, uh, we just, whatever we earn, we give it to the government. Uh, and uh, we maintain a certain uh, uh, decorum for it. I mean, we maintain a certain kind of accounting system. And as I was uh, mentioning that uh, pro forma accounting systems has been, uh, is going to be introduced very shortly. We have already prepared all our documents submitted to DAE uh, for, uh, for this. And I hope by a year or so, uh, this pro forma accounting system will come. And that will clearly show that, uh, when basically that will be something like a profit and loss account, balance sheet, uh, your uh, what is your asset value, et cetera, et cetera. Everything will be there. So it will be something like a company accounts. So basically, we are all working for towards this Atmanirvar Bharat, and this is basically our wish list. And I hope uh, over a period of down the line, four to five years time, we should be able to uh, get these things. Uh, should be possible. It should be possible for us to implement all these things. In the healthcare, definitely, we have a plan to tie up with TMC and making the collaboration for uh, establishing various medical cyclotones in the different TMCs. As we all know, we have uh, the TMC already started in Varanasi, uh, something is coming in Vishakapatnam also. So various places the TMC is making and the cyclotones, it is expected that we can take care of it. And, uh, Definitely, we should be able to produce uh, PET isotopes uh, from uh, cyclotron, like copper 64, gallium 68 is already done, uh, actinium 225, and the germanium 68. So that is germanium 68. I'm hoping by a year or so, we should be able to produce our indigenous germanium gallium generator, which will substantially reduce the cost of gallium uh, cost of gallium uh, therapy, uh, sorry, cost of gallium diagnosis uh, for the patients. <clears throat> and we have also started, a, we are also going to start a project for uh, doing this peptides. Uh, peptides are normally, uh, at present, we are procuring a large quantity of peptide from outside. But uh, Brit, along with BOD, we are going to uh, make a project at Brit facility, Vashi. <laughs> where we'll have a large quantity of peptide will be produced, which will uh, take care definitely. Everything is basically to reduce the cost and make this, uh, make, this, uh, make this particular nuclear medicine application more affordable for the people of our nation. And uh, this is my dream, of course, let us see when it can be. I, we would like to have a WHO GMP compliance for the entire production facilities with all sorts of process automation because uh, these big facilities are uh, built quite a long back, um, but uh, somewhere at that time, the automation things were not there. We have done something, but still a miles to go actually. In the industrial sector, as I was telling, uh, the cobalt 60 will be produced from the 700 megawatt uh, PHWRs. And we have already started a rack of expansion project. In fact, the groundbreaking has been already done uh, on uh, 2nd of May. Uh, chairman has been done this uh, Rumi Pujan in that. And um, uh, that rack of uh, expansion project that will be completed somewhere in the range to 25, 26. Around that time, actually, we are expecting that 700 megawatt also will produce the uh, cobalt. And uh, that 700 megawatt cobalt will add a new dimension in the cobalt business of form breed. Uh, as I was telling you in my presentation that uh, demand of cobalt 60 becoming uh, day and day by day it is increasing. And especially in the uh, export market, we uh, last year we did approximately 70 crore export of cobalt 60. And uh, the way we are getting inquiry uh, if we are able to establish successfully this RAPCO facility and the 700 megawatt chain, I think India will become a pioneer, in fact, leader in this uh, particular cobalt business. 
Uh, this is another project we are going to start. Uh, in fact, the grid board has already approved it. And uh, this is, uh, I, uh, I was going uh, through this RT radiation uh, technology, this camera. This camera source is a big number is required. Uh, right now we are producing around 600 odd, 700 odd uh, camera source per year. But actual requirement is something in the tune of around three to four times. So there is a huge amount of gap, which we are going to address it with making another facility at Bridvashi which will take care of this uh, camera source fabrication <clears throat> very effectively and quite a large number. And in the isotope application service, since it has been growing quite fast, going, going very fast in the last year. Uh, in fact, after COVID, I'm seeing a quantum jump in it. And uh, we have already started procuring all the state-of-the-art technologies, all new, new instruments, and this will definitely augment our this isotope application service. So this is our wish list and down the line, maybe three to four years time, we'll be definitely able to achieve it. As all the health professionals, uh, they must be eagerly looking for the use of actinium-225, the alpha therapy. And uh, let us see, uh, we should be able to uh, uh, use 30 MeV cyclotron very effectively and to produce this actinium-225 maybe in a couple of years. So that was my last slide. Thank you very much. Uh, this is our tagline, harnessing nuclear radiation for mankind. Thank you, and Jai Hind. Thank you. Thank you, Mukherjee. It was an excellent presentation. And then I'm seeing a lot of uh, good messages for you in the chat box. Kohli has appreciated you. Rajan has appreciated you. And uh, if there are any questions, uh, you can take a couple of them. Anybody in the... Viewers list. Uh, Ramaraji, can I say something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go ahead, Manchandaji. Uh, just one minute. Let me see whether I can. Yeah. Uh, Mukherjee Sahib, it was a really wonderful presentation. In fact, uh, I mean, uh, could not count the number of initiatives and uh, so many things have been so nicely completed under your stewardship. And uh, so I have a couple of questions actually. See, I am a little bit aware of the 30 MeV cyclotron at uh, Calcutta. Yes. So these are all, you know, very old projects uh, for various reasons. I will say that they, they were getting delayed. But I am very, very excited to hear that you have completed uh, just few days back the switch and molly thing. Mm. Is a, I mean, something I have to salute. Uh, my question is, I don't know whether you will like to respond or not, actually, but you can skip that. Uh, is it that, uh, I mean, how much is the indigenous part in the plant, actually? Whether you like to answer no, that. No, 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 it, it is not at all an indigenous plant at all. It is, we have procured it from, it is on a turnkey basis from an Argentinian company called Inva. Nothing, nothing is this. Only our, our, in a, effort, indigenous effort is uh, two things. Um, number one is uh, that plate that which is going to be, I mean, that uh, LEU target. The target plates is completely our technology. <coughs> in, fact, in fact, I want to share with you, the Argentinian team also was very happy after seeing the performance of the plates. So it was a real challenge at that. Uh, in fact, initially it was started with the plates uh, in the scope of um, Argentina, but uh, due to certain uh, certain issues, uh, international issues, uh, so it has been taken over by our team, and uh, we are doing it uh, ourselves, and that is definitely a pride for it. But definitely, uh, no uh, no component inside this, uh, except one thing, of course, except that uh, window, radiation shielding window that uh, has been done by indigenously by us. So but this process, hmm. process actually the guarded technology, sir, actually the process was not available to us. It's completely by them. Yeah, still, I think it is very, I will say, highly gratifying that uh, we have done some part of it, which is, I think, very critical. And uh, But the second part, uh, when it comes to the running the plan, uh, the consumables and those generator part, 
are we on our own or there also we need their help no sir those consumables and those polymer material those uh, chemicals everything is available so we, we are on our own no 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 but we have around 2 years uh, uh, material available with us but uh, as such uh, this is available in india so we are on our own yeah 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 okay. absolutely not a problem my absolutely sec my second question relates to this mangoes you know this also is a very old uh, our program where now some innovation from the brc research team on the chemical treatment has helped immensely in increasing the shelf life so that is what you said we can mm. switch over from air to the sea so we can go by sea route my mm. question is when you are now shipping by sea route mm. does it require low temperature or it can go even at normal temperature no no no, no. it requires a temperature control i i in fact i don't know what is the temperature but it has to be a temperature control container It is not just that, yeah. and it needs some kind of a pre-processing also. Uh, what is it? Last thing you said, it needs. It needs some pre-processing also. Pre-processing. Hmm. Yeah, that part you have mentioned actually, but other than radiation, that chemical. No, no, no. Apart important. from radiation. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Apart yeah, from that, radiation, also there is some pre-processing. Chemical treatment is important. Something is there, not chemical. No, something else is there. So those uh, particular protocol, I really don't know. Okay, that has been developed by FTD. Uh, Now, but, uh, my last question is that yeah. uh, you know when it comes to the uh, medical application, these are mostly targeted to the I mean um, patients hmm. who uh, have sometimes you know out of necessity they do not have much of a problem in accepting this radiation and uh, isotopes for the treatment purpose but over the year i just want to know actually what is the situation with the rest of the industry i mean other alternate techniques are they posing challenge to the use of radiation technology so far as the use of uh, i mean in refinery ports and other places when you have your i mean customer whether the customer base is shrinking or expanding uh, sir uh, first of all are you talking about the healthcare part of it no not healthcare i am talking about industry industrial part yeah 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 so basically sir the isotopes those stressors what we are using they are mostly the uh, mostly the low half life like moly is used sometimes we also use um, like for this uh, <coughs> dam study dam study we use uh, gold okay uh, because gold is having a typical affinity affinity for going towards that uh, that cracks sort of and gets deposited there so this exercise is r and d part actually being done by uh, this pans group Uh, they are doing it in uh, brc uh, we normally execute these things but as so far as uh, the refinery is concerned the most attractive part of the refinery is that downtime should be reduced as i was telling very, very frequently and um, uh, we 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 did one uh, buried piping uh, buried piping one uh, inspection where we could identify the problem there was a leakage in the buried pipe and we could identify the a within a span of 2 meters so basically the 2 meter they had to dig and uh, rectify that particular portion of the pipe so this is the kind of advantage is there compared to that the other things what you are talking about that is not so in so much a, anyway we take care of the radioactivity part of it because these are all low active very less amount of stressor is given and those are all low half life so that part is taken care of no but do i understand your customer base with respect to the industrial application is not shrinking you are maintaining the customers no no, no it has community? increased it and has increased, increased a lot okay because i am i am watching it i am watching it for the last in fact covid year it was very much troublesome Uh, because 
uh, it is a very uh, understanding understandable uh, covid year it was not there but after the covid this has increased a lot in fact uh, i was apprehensive the people were apprehensive that what what should be the <coughs> target this year in fact we have crossed the target in fact we are right now around three times of the target itself in uh, just six months congratulations thank you very much thank you sir thank you sir uh, <clears throat> are there any other question chatopadhyay uh, you have any question sudipto sudipto chatopadhyay well kohli has given some comment but then it is not a question rajan also has given some comment it is not a question uh i think all round there has been a lot of appreciation ah uh, sanat kumar yeah he sanat kumar has a question mukherjee i am reading his question i had heard that there was a big shortage of molly isotopes for export from canada to the world can india step in to this direction uh let me let me just go through it who is the person sir uh, uh, sanat kumar he has put it at 6:32 pm 6:32 i don't have anything in 632 oh i see no his question is uh, he has heard that there was a big shortage of uh, molly isotope and uh, uh, can india step in in this direction ah uh, okay i'll come to this first of all sir molly isotope is in scarcity i really don't know is he talking is she talking about uh, molly 99 because molly 99 market is quite stable uh -huh. there are two three very big players are there in the market one is ansto australia okay. another is uh, ntp south africa another is rosatom okay. china really we don't know hmm. and these are the facilities one each facility can produce something in the tune of around 2000 to 3000 curie of molly okay okay whereas our facility is too small for that i mean okay. only 300 kg okay okay so uh, i have of course not heard that kind of thing but right now as i was telling sir first this is a very uh, small step towards this uh, atmanirbhar bharat for yeah. molly we have uh, now this 300 kg plant let us gain experience out of it let these yeah. young people operate this and you know i mean get uh, the feeling of it once you start operating and get the feeling out is maybe down the line maybe 4 to 5 years time we should be able to have our own uh, uh, design plant not this particular plant maybe a own design plant and uh, maybe we should be able to produce in the tune of around 1000 or 1500 then we have a footing uh, to in, in the export market right now with 300 curie as per my uh, knowledge uh, we will not be able to exploit too much of this uh, export market of molly uh, if we want to exploit the export market of molly we should have a facility in the tune of around 2000 qv or 1500 qv per week six day calibration that's my feeling after studying the market so that's all from my side sir ramarao ji ramarao ji are there it looks he is disconnected it seems and let me just call him actually just see
Okay, I think I am seeing Kohli sir's comment. <clears throat> yeah, Saru smelting has contributed in a different you're fabrication. Out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm just waiting for it. So we are waiting. You continue, sir. Nee, we can discuss. Yeah, no, no, but you can do one thing. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, please discuss. Uh, okay. Please, uh, All right. Uh, now, nah, I think I will discuss few more points. Yeah, yeah, please, please. Okay. Please. Okay, okay, I'll I'll just uh, go through Dr. Kohli's comment that Saru smelting had con contributed in a different fabrication construction. Yeah, Saru smelting has played certain role in uh, constructing those, uh, you know, hot cells. And uh, so that way some indigenization is there. Yes, sir. I, I, I should have mentioned. And those uh, Indian industry also made uh, that C triple T container. Uh, C triple T container is used. Basically, we are uh, irradiating those uh, target plates inside uh, Dhruva, and this fission molly plant is in the south side. So, the transportation of uh, this uh, fission plates to uh, fission molly plant that is through that particular specific type of container, and that has been, uh, and of course, it is made of tungsten. And uh, that container was built by a Pune based company. So Indian industry has played a good, good amount of role in this. I mean, maybe around 25% uh, job has been carried out in India for this fission model plan. But okay, the design per se, it is not ours, except the plate and that window. Mukherjee sir, this Dr. Ramara is trying to join. Actually, he is uh, uh, inadvertently he has gone out. Now he is joining. But in the meantime, I, may I ask you one more question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is you know regarding that uh, you know that uh, our defense related that you have mentioned that tritium filled uh, luminous Light source. Hmm. So can you just elaborate on that? Actually, is it really you could supply that, or it is still in the trial stage or something like that? No, sir. We are running a few it roads. Is, it is going on already? Yes, sir, quite a long back. Okay, now I am not familiar with that. So can no. you just elaborate in on fact, that? In fact, the, uh, in fact, the requirement has increased a lot. That's why we are making another plant inside us. Okay. So, and uh, you know, I mean, our, those glass tubes, borosilicate glass tubes, those are presently what we are making is a 3 mm dag. So mm -hmm. the funda is this that, uh, you have a glass tube and you have those uh, particular phosphor type of uh, material. And then you uh, insert the tritium gas and tritium gas and then seal it. Now, uh, this diameter is 3 mm, which presently we are doing. But uh, the recently the requirement for uh, still lesser diameter, lesser diameter uh, tubes are coming from the defense. So we have developed a uh, particular machine um, for the mass production of uh, one mm and less diameter uh, borosilicate glass tubes filled with tritium. So that technology has been developed by RRCAT and we'll be utilizing that technology in our new facility, which is going to come up inside us basically. And I hope everything is ready. Now the final uh, clearing process, regulatory clearing process is going on. Maybe in a couple of months time that will come into future. So our production is quite high, sir. And so entire, entire supply, difference- Supplying in hundreds? Uh, I no, mean, no, 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 not in hundreds. This is all in 10,000, 20, Oh, great. In that number. So it is a very regular. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's a regular requirement from uh, defense. And uh, just uh, talk a little bit about the ultimate uh, application part of it, actually. That is, you said that it will uh, 
give you some sort sort of visibility at a distance of 10 meters or so 10 to 15 meters. around 50 meters 50 meters it, so after that the people will not be able to see it so basically the lumen what it is uh, uh, emits mm -hmm. that will be quite low so suppose during the time, night time night time a makeshift bridge the tank has to cross so mm -hmm. what they normally do they put at the ages those uh, tritium lights so that the enemy will not be able to will not come to know whether this tank is moving or not because they have uh, added after a distance of 50 meter it will be totally dark mm -hmm. so that is the way in the defense it is one of the use i do then uh, for the night vision of your uh, gun we are pointing something so that pointer, that's why that one mm diameter must have come requirement. So it has to be very highly pointed. Okay. So uh, normally in the front of that uh, gun, this tritium light source will be there in a different form. So that the, I mean, that people can do a proper, this uh, a nisana lagana hai, so that they can do it. In the but night time. Is, is it uh, the whole purpose is uh, that during the actual war time it will be of use or even otherwise also? Sir, actually we get the order from the uh, those uh, ordinance factories. We are producing the weapons, no? Okay. So in the weapon preparation they require it. Okay. No, I understand it a little bit. Yeah, I, I am back. Um, oh, good, good, good. Uh, then I have suddenly remembered one small question, Ramaraji, if you allow. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, um, All other questions are over? Uh, yeah, I was uh, disconnected for some reason, I don't know. Uh, Zoom uh, uh, got uh, disconnected. So let me uh, just ask one uh, small yeah, yeah, question. Please, please, please. But this, uh, this uh, were one of the great success story of... Uh, a Brit has been that isomed, you know, which we had set up in uh, probably 70s and it has run so successfully. Yes, sir. Just give me some idea about uh, the how long this will run and what are the future plans on that. Okay, sir. Basically, this plant was operating and uh, last two last year, it uh, ARB told that uh, there are certain some technical issues were there. So those uh, issues are to be resolved. In fact, in the, you know, this is a dry pit. So there are some corrosion has been observed. So uh, ARB told, uh, and because of that corrosion, actually it swelled and the source was not going fully in. So there are some kind of a streaming issue. So ARB told it to stop and last to last year it was stopped. And then we took up a project uh, to revamp this entire thing and uh, we are in the last phase of uh, placing the order to the successful bidder, which I'm expecting uh, maybe in a month or so, we should be able to uh, start the work. And maybe in time, in maybe around 14 to 16 months time, we should be able to complete the project. And in a span of say two years or so, we should be able to restart or resume this plan. In fact, uh, this was the first plan built in 1974. And as you all know, this was all for medical product sterilization. And uh, after this, of course, and, uh, from uh, when we started giving this technology to the other people, and then a uh, lot of uh, lot of plants have been made. As uh, as you know, that 30 odd plants are uh, operating throughout India. It's radiation processing plant. And uh, more than 50% of it are doing the medical products only. And uh, this is a very, I mean, it's a good business. I mean, the person, if you can invest around uh, 10 to 12 crore, crore uh, then you can earn a lot. Maybe after five years or so, you'll come to the break even and uh, do this. So it's a profitable business, uh, and uh, which actually uh, all of them are uh, indebted to the Department of Atomic Energy for this uh, technology. And, um, but here, uh, what happened, some of the low, I mean, the small players, they 
don't get the advantage of uh, you know I mean this medical product sterilization because they may have to pay. Uh, that's what I came to know that they have to pay a good amount for a particular product sterilization. Uh, suppose your gloves are getting sterilized, so you have to pay more amount. But here. Uh, in ISO made, uh, since it's a government owned and all these things, so there's some kind of a pricing uh, stability is there. So uh, I hope uh, when this uh, plant will be uh, plant will resume, again uh, there will be some kind of a cost reduction uh, in the overall all the medical product sterilization plant all in the country, which will be helpful for. Uh, everyone. So, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Doctor Amarao? Then he got this connection. I, I don't know. Again, actually, inadvertently, he has uh, again been ousted. Dr. Ramarao, I think if there are no more questions, can we close down? Metaji, I think we yeah, can propose about that, uh, has, I think we can thank the speaker. Yeah. So I think on behalf of INS, on behalf of Dr. Ramarao, let me have the privilege of thanking the speaker. I think he has covered a very wide canvas and he has brought to the notice of INS members so many new developments, whether it is the 30 MEV cyclone, so many new products are coming up. And uh, also the, the new cameras, which he was talking, the fission molly he was talking. And I don't know because I have not kept the track, but uh, obviously the curve which he has shown, you know, that is the difference between whatever is the revenue and whatever is the non-plan expenditure. So the difference has been in going up. All kudos to Mukherjee Saab and his team and to Brit. And I think he's keeping the flag of Brit very, very high. So once again, I like to uh, thank him on behalf of INS and the webinar committee. For some reason, our convener has been uh, ousted, but uh, we are very, very grateful to you for having accepted the invitation and enlightened us. Yes, so, and, and congratulations from me. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to showcase the breed activity. And I hope, uh, the good uh, wishes from all our uh, esteemed members will be bestowed on us so that we can uh, we can go we can pass these milestones one by one as i was thinking the last slide which i showed that was our wish list and i am just hopeful before my retirement in 2026 i should be able to see that breed has produced actinium to if that comes i will be feeling very successful sir Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to the webinar committee and the audience. I think there was a very good audience. So thank each one of you. I think. Thank you, sir. Thank you, for, thank you. Thank you for taking thank you. over. Thank you. Uh, I think we can. Uh, I think uh, relax. All now. the best. All the best to break, and we conclude the session. Oh. Thank you, sir.